Let me first of all welcome you very warmly to the seat of the presidency of our country, to Jubilee House, and to say how very happy I am to have you here with us. To congratulate you first of all on your appointment, your important appointment, representing directly the Secretary General of the United Nations in our region, and a man I know well. We were former colleagues together in our other lives. I'm happy that uh, today we're having to deal with you and the problems of our region. I think your own assessment of really, uh, and, well, before even we come to that, I want to thank to congratulate you on the very active manner in which you've entered into your office. You virtually visited virtually all the countries of the region and been responsible for two briefings to the, uh, to the Security Council. Uh, you've been very active in the very limited time that you've been here. And that bodes well for us, that we therefore sense in you a sense of urgency about the problems that we have. I don't think anybody can gainsay the fact that the biggest issue in our region is the, the security matter. The jihadist threat in the Sahel and its implications for all of us, whether or not we're in the Sahel or coastal states. Uh, the, the presence of the jihadists in Mali uh, a decade ago, and the steady expansion of their activities and influence eastwards, and now clearly also southwards towards the coastal countries like our own is something that is a preoccupying issue for all of us. And it has got involved with issues of governance in Burkina Faso and in Mali, and today we're being told in Niger as well, it's uh, the proximate cause of the unconstitutional changes of government that we have witnessed in their cause. Guinea is a slightly different case. But we're talking about uh, a region which until uh, four or five years ago was held as a model of, of, of democratic governance on the continent. And the, uh, virtually all the nations of ECOWAS had now been the, the subject of democratic elections. And suddenly that picture of ECOWAS as a, a democratic space has been uh, compromised by these events in Guinea, in Mali, in Burkina Faso, and now in, in Niger. So it's, 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 it's the biggest preoccupation we have, and how to re-establish democratic rule in these nations is a major preoccupation of people like myself, because we think that uh, the issues of, uh, I, I have to confess I disagree with the analysis of the the leaders of Burkina Faso made to you that somehow or other you can de distinguish the uh, governance from issues of security and, and you can, as it were, deal with security on its own without uh, taking into account the, the quality of governance of, 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 the, of, of those who are prosecuting the battle for security. I think it's, it's a mistaken view. It is a view that brought them to power and it continues to be their view. Uh, the efforts that they're making in Burkina Faso to confront the terrorist menace has not improved. They, they, they have not been able to turn the tide uh, of, 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 the, of terrorism in Burkina Faso by taking on the responsibility of governance. We need to restore all these countries to democratic rule. But we have and um, the methods to do so are what are proving to be difficult. 
Many, including myself, have been arguing for some time about the need for the mandate of, for instance, MINUSMA to have been expanded, to give MINUSMA the role, a more forceful, a more robust mandate than it had, uh, which has led to its being, as it were, expelled, if you like, uh, by the Malians from Mali. I think these are matters that we, in, in future, we all have to work together and look at more closely. And if we're going to be talking about UN interventions in, uh, in peacekeeping forces in our area, the nature of the mandate that the, that the Security Council has to give them is something that I think ECOWAS and the United Nations should look at more closely in the future. Because it's quite clear that uh, the, the relatively uh, limited mandate that MINUSMA had in Mali had also a lot to do with its inability to act in the, when, when action was required. I think that this, it's an area that we all have to look at and draw the appropriate lessons for, for the future. Whilst we're dealing with these issues of security, we can never overlook the vital imperative of finding the means to propel the economic growth and development of our nations. Because that, at the end of the day, is the proper route towards stability in our area. We're talking about poor states, which have major problems of poverty, of youth unemployment. And it is only economic development, economic growth, that can address these issues. So as we struggle to establish stability and peace and security in our area, we have also at the same time to continue the search for means to propel our economies forward because that, that's an indispensable uh, part of the search for stability in our area. And I think there's an area where both the UN and ECOWAS can profitably work together and find some uh, consensus and coordination of ideas and, and, and views. I think that uh, statesmen of your stature and understanding of the problems of our continent and of our region are in a very ideal position to promote that dialogue and uh, we will all very happily assist in uh, finding a way where the UN and ECOWAS can work together effectively for the problems of our area. ECOWAS was the poster boy of regional integration on the continent until a few years ago. And it's important that we find a way to restore that position and that reality, that image, back to our course. Uh, we are happy that, uh, as I say, a man of your experience is now in charge of this very sensitive and important function in the place. And you can count on the Ghanaian government to give you as much support as we're capable of to make sure that uh, your tenure as uh, the Secretary General's representative in our area is successful. Uh, we have a double responsibility because your predecessor was our compatriot. Yes. And it would look very bad if, uh, if having succeeded him, we were somehow to be seen to be dragging our feet <laughs> in, in helping you with your, with your work. So we have a special responsibility in making sure that your, your period as, as, as the Secretary General's representative works. The various, um, I, I've heard the arguments that the Guinean leader has been making as to the reasons for his coup and what he's doing. Well, we'll see, we'll see. History will be the final determinant. But I'm, I'm skeptical about these grounds for intervention that he has articulated. In, in, impliedly in what, what, he, what he's saying. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll see how that works. Um, Mali, which we'll be going to, is still the big conundrum for all of us. How we are going to um, ensure that A, they stick to the timetable, the agreed timetable of their course, which calls for elections. In fact, in all three countries, next year is the date in which they should be 
having elections. But I don't get the impression that there's any really serious movement in that in that direction. But you can you'll be in a position to determine for yourself in my little scope. Our immediate um, focus, of course, is what has occurred in Miami and how that situation can be reversed. I think ECOWAS at the summit, which was held in Abuja yesterday, my understanding is that the decision that was taken to say that all measures, including the use of force, will be available to the authority to deal with this uh, unconstitutional, attempted unconstitutional change of government, is basically a way of saying that they're drawing the line in the sand. We, we cannot continue the, this avenue of coups taking place, negotiating with the soldiers for a transition and return to constitutional rule uh, as, as the way forward. We have to try and actually make it difficult for these things to occur. So, and if that they occur, that they cannot, they cannot stabilize. And that is the decision that the authority took yesterday in uh, Abuja. Ghana was in full support of the, of the measures that have been outlined and uh, full support of the leadership of the Nigerian president, Ola Tinibu, to make sure that we restore ECOWAS as a democratic space. It's extremely important for the future of the region and the populations here. So we will um, be working with you closely to make sure that uh, the overall objective of restoring the peace, the security, and the forward more progress of the, of the community is re-established, and that we work together to bring an end to this uh, insurgency that has taken hold of the Sahelian part of, 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 our, of our region with its implications for the rest of us. So, I'm, I want to express my gratitude to you for coming to see us. You didn't leave us out in your peregrinations <laughs> in the region. Um, and as I indicated to you, we are very ready to extend a hand of support and whatever it is that Ghana can do to help make your tenure as the Secretary General's representative was successful. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Thank you Mr. President. For sharing with me your views on that. Uh, I have uh, two heads. I'm a UN, but I'm African also. So uh, any mission, uh, you, Mr. President, or your colleagues, think that I can do for the region, please yeah, contact me through your colleagues. Uh, you know my background. Uh, I'm here to serve the, the continent. Uh, because also I have a, a deep understanding of the challenge our countries are going through. Even last week there was this discussions about the, the refoulement of uh, um, refugees there. So I did work with my colleagues to say, well, countries like uh, Ghana with the strong institutions and uh, with a strong uh, uh, tradition of rule of law and having a president who himself is a, a, a jurist uh, cannot rene renegate the uh, international commitments. Uh, so we have to work with the government to understand what happened also. And I'm happy today that well, this, uh, there is progress. Our colleagues are working with the government and they have a, a better understanding what uh, is uh, at stake. So I think uh, this is the way to, it gives uh, also insurance because also we have to protect government uh, also. Uh, some of the decisions or some are not taking it lightly on that. There are a strong reasons to take that. But uh, I'm very happy to see that uh, uh, there is a lot of progress on that. So once again, thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. As I said, I'm available. Yeah you and to the region. So well, you're, here for, you're, you're here for tonight, you leave tomorrow, is that uh, it? Tomorrow I'm still there because I okay. have this uh, uh, bar association 
uh, conference uh, starting tomorrow. And after tomorrow, then I will. West Africa. West Africa.